to be here. Now let's let the world know what we're here for. Everybody, Mike Brown! Working on ourselves. 
Um, I witnessed the death about eight years ago, and I've suffered from panic for eight years because of that death. And I think catastrophe use, use, is usually the thing that brings us together, unfortunately, or the Giants when they win a World Series. <laughs> and uh, I wish we could be as happy about the Giants as we are about our own government. Now that would be pretty deep because we stand side by side with each other when we're in a bar watching the game, having a beer. So I'm asking you guys to start the movement, to step outside your own box. Whatever that box is. If you're gay and you don't like women, say hi to a woman. If you're, if you're angry at the gentrification, have a sit in one of the fucking coffee shops. Yeah. 20 people. Make, make an interruption there like Martin Luther King did. All right? And have a discussion. And now I'm going to read you a poem that's really important to me. Because the young man who the poem is about is not here to speak it for himself. And it took eight years for me to write this poem. When we, when we realize how close death is to us, that's when we come alive. We need to come alive in the moment. Young men need to stand up, come to City Hall on Tuesdays and speak for their communities. Instead of getting arrested and going to jail, because I think going to jail is a lot more scary than coming to the Board of Supervisors office and facing Mercurini and all these other people, London Breed and all that, because we really can do something. And if there's anybody who wants to be a software engineer, start your own social network. Organize to buy things from your own communities. Don't shop from other people. Now I'm going to do my poem. <laughs> On Wednesday, he came by smiling and said, I'm going to college. I watched him growing up. He grew away from drugs and violence. He said, I earned a football scholarship. I watched him growing up. On Friday, he was shot. He said, I earned a football scholarship. I ran to save his life. On Friday, he was shot. draped it on his mouth. His eyes looked glazed and lifeless. 
On Wednesday, he came by smiling and said, I'm going to college. On Friday, I failed to save his life. Mm. I failed, I failed, I failed. It should be written on my forehead to please be kind. But then who would read the signs that I said anyone, anyone, anyone can snap? If you want to begin the peace process, love, respect, sharing, ask permission first. And then hug somebody that's suffering. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Can we give it up one more time? That was amazing. Thank you. We have the families coming up, but I briefly want to say, look around. This is what you call a movement. This is a movement. There are thousands and thousands of people standing in front of City Hall saying, we want change. And I'm going to tell you right now, we may have inconvenienced a lot of people. But I say, you know what, sorry for the inconvenience, we're trying to change the world. I come from the people that are from the Patagonia to the border of Mexico and the United States have been suffering through a war. A war that has caused many lives of young people like brother Michael Brown, young people like brother Pietro, young people who had a future that had been shut down in Mexico, 23 students, rurales, were going to help their people, were disappeared by the state of Mexico, were burned and were disappeared, and we are still looking for the remains. That is the war on drugs. And the federal government of Mexico is in cahoots, and it's proven it's in cahoots. We need a medic. Medic. We need a medic. In the far left. Put your hands up, please. Put your hands up right there. Medic. Yeah. I, I will. I will have the tools in here for anybody who needs some healing. And uh, I understand anger. We are angry too. We are very angry in Mexico because 23 lives have been shut down. And it's not just Mexico. It goes all the way down to the Patagonia. It's all over. And it's the federal government of the United States and the federal government of Mexico. The ones who are promoting a war against the youth. Promoting against the poor, against the peasants, against the people who have the list. The campesinos. And we got to stop it. We cannot lose more lives. We cannot lose more people. In order for us to stop that crazy war that has been carried on since Reagan and Nixon, we need to make a ceremonial offering to the Madre Tierra, to our Tonatzin, to our Madre Tierra, Nuestra Pachamama. We have to make them out an offering because it's needed. We need the healing. Our mother is suffering because she's losing her children. Any mother who loses children is suffering. And I want to make it clear. It's not just the brothers and sisters in the United States. It's happening all the way down south as well. Before we get the families up here, I want to say thank you. But you have some people around the country saying this isn't a racial issue. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's absolutely a racial issue because we have black and brown lives being killed every day. That is a racial issue. It doesn't matter what race the law enforcement is, it's the fact that our black and brown boys are dying. We have enough things killing us. Protect us, please. Protect us. We don't need one more thing trying to kill us. Because I was born and raised in this city. And Alex Nieto lived around the corner from me, and we were the same age. And this man was shot over 12 times. 15 times. 15 times. And it could have been me, it could have been a lot of folks who are standing in this crowd right now. And so when someone says, why are you doing this? It's not a racial thing. And say, because it could have been you. 
And so I want to welcome the family of Alex Nieto, Rufirio, Nieto, and Ben, representing them. The gentleman right here is Alex Nieto's father. He has a few words he would like to say. He is a man of few words, but giant spirit. His whole family is right here, okay? Yo soy Refugio Nieto, el padre de Ale Nieto, que el 21 de marzo de 2014 lo mataron aquí en el Cerrito. Nueve meses van ya y, y no hay justicia para nosotros porque no, no sabemos nada hasta hoy día. Lo único que quiero agradecerle es a todos los conocidos de él y toda la gente que lo ha acompañado en las marchas que... En vez de quedarse abajo, está subiendo los, y le estamos muy agradecidos con toda la gente que lo está siguiendo. Y lo único que pedimos es la justicia para él y no van a parar. Y, y muchas gracias por toda la familia, Nieto. Gracias, gracias. Gracias. I'm going to translate what Refugio said. He said he is Refugio Nieto, the father of Alex Nieto, who was killed on Bernal Heights on March 21st of this year. He offers thanks to all of you for coming and supporting this beautiful, unfortunate cause of police killings. He also says that all he wants is truth and justice. That is it. A couple of words here, all right? My name is Ben Boxiera. I was Alex Nieto's friend. He was like my brother. I love that man. I love that man. And I love all of these people who are up here. All of you who are out there supporting us. Gracias. Thank you. I want to give a special thanks to Theo and all of the City College of San Francisco students. Alex Nieto was a City College student. And just like the politician, the poet just said, guess what? He was a scholarship student. He had never been arrested in his entire life. He had volunteered at the Youth Guidance Center. He had volunteered for John Avalos' campaign. He was someone who I marched with personally. He would have marched for all of you right here. There is no reason that he should have been killed the way that he was, all right? But even though all of that tragedy is true, I know what he held in his heart. And what he held in his heart is this. And I want you to repeat after me. Amor. 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 Okay, we cannot allow this unlawful police type of corruption and killing to poison our hearts because they want you to listen to the word justice and feel bitter and hateful. And you know what? If they get that, then they win. No, it's okay to be angry. We should be angry, but don't allow that to be a state of being, all right? I want to say this, that things are happening right now in San Francisco. This case is taking on a transformational tone. We meet on the 21st at Bernal Heights at 6 p.m. We'll start from 24th Street and we'll march up 
to where they killed Alex. Please be there. Join the Justice for Alex Nieto dot org website and the Justice for Alex Nieto Facebook page. I love you all. I offer you my love. Es todo. Goodbye. Thank you. And as we're doing announcements, I want to make sure that we keep this momentum going, that we keep it strong, we keep it consistent. And on Monday, December 15th at Mission High School at 4 p.m. in the auditorium, we have Michael Brown's father coming to speak. The Black Student Union of Mission High School decided that they wanted to step up. They wanted to be part of this movement. So I hope that each and every one of you will come out Monday, 4 p.m. And we'd love to see you all. Handle, young people. Handle. I want to thank you guys all again for coming out and demonstrating peacefully. And next up we have Kadeen Williams, whose brother, his sister. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm the sister of O'Shane Evans that was murdered by San Francisco Police Officer David Goff on October 7th of this year. Yes, right in your backyard and you don't even know about it. We didn't even know about it. My mother, he was, they pronounced him dead at 930 2 uh, p.m. that night, and we didn't get a call till 2.07 in the morning. Not from the police station, but from the coroner's office, telling my mother while she's laying in her bed that her son has been murdered by San Francisco, by, murdered by San Francisco police. Um, I got that call about 2.10 from my mother crying, saying, Kadeen, Kadeen, and kill O'Shin, and kill O'Shin, and kill O'Shin. San Francisco police officer, kill O'Shin. You don't know what it's like to hear that coming from your mother, that your brother has been killed and your mother is just crying and you don't know what to do. I don't know how I got to her house, but I was just praying like, please God, just get me over there. I didn't drive that car. God took me over there that night because I couldn't drive. I was by myself. My sister had a panic attack. She had to call the ambulance to get her. So I drove over there and my mother was in the street crying, crying, holding her stomach saying they killed my baby, mm. they killed my baby. When we got over here to San Francisco, they said to the general hospital, they said that the body was gone, they waited for us. How could you have waited for us? We got there around three something. How could you have waited for us? And no one called us. The only person called us was the coroner. Why is the coroner calling us? And then another thing, the town hall meeting, we weren't notified of the town hall meeting. If it wasn't for Channel 7 News, we'd have never knew about it. Um, they lied and they continued to lie on my brother. He was sitting in his car. He was just sitting there and police officer, his friends were committing a crime. They walked up to him and he pulled an unloaded gun on him. Come on, unloaded gun? You're in this, if you, anyone that knows my brother knows that, he's not gonna pull a gun on a police officer. Two weeks before that, he was stopped in Oakland for driving on a suspended license. When my mother went to go get him, the officer said, oh, your son is was well behaved, he didn't give me any problem, da da da. And then two weeks later, an officer in San Francisco kill him, saying that he pulled an unloaded gun. People don't believe the hype. Don't believe what these people say on the news. They're all lies. They lie on our family. All they do is lie. Do not believe the hype. Do not believe the hype. Peace, sir. Peace, sir, and his whole crew, they write up this phony story and put it out there, saying, oh, say this, and say this. He gave my mother, mother so many promises at the town hall meeting. It was like, oh, you're going to clean your car up, we're going to get it back to you, and da, 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 da. Until now, we haven't heard from that man. We don't even know what kind of investigation they're doing. Personally, I don't believe in that investigation, because how does the police investigate the police? How does that work? How does that work? was trained to become a boxer. His trainer came out and spoke the first visual we had at um, 850 Bryant. He said that O'Shane had hurt his hand, you know, training, and he was out for a month. And that same day when he got killed, he came, he went there and said, you know what, I'm ready, I'm coming back. But he never made, only to know that he was saying his goodbye to his trainer. You know, that his life will be taken by Officer David Goff. Officer David Goff. Officer David Goff took my brother's life. Do you know what it's like to hear your mother crying every day saying my baby won't come home? He's not coming home. If O'Shea was here, he would have helped me with this because they live together. You know what? Now that my heart is hurting. My stomach hurts. You know, this is the worst feeling. I wouldn't 
wish this. I would wish this on David Goff. I would wish this on him, but I wouldn't wish this on anyone else. But thank you guys for all your support. And, you know, I don't know how to keep calm in this. I don't know how to keep calm, because until I get justice, they're not going to get any peace out of me. So I don't know what peace is. I don't no longer know what peace is. Until I get justice, there will be no peace. From San Francisco to Oakland, there will be no peace. No justice. But I want everybody to just look around at each other and be so grateful in the power of the people right Woo! now. This is the this is the next generation. This is what we gotta do to change the world right here, right now. You know what I'm saying? So I'm about to do this poem and it's directed right at the police state and it's called Cops Keep Firing. So you can do the hook if you want to with me, and I'm gonna use these brothers and these sisters who've been killed right here. Well, I go, and the hook is basically, cops keep firing in our environment. Cops keep firing in our environment. Say it as loud as you can and let these police hear, you know what I'm saying? But well, I'm about to do it right now. What happened to freeze and put your hands up high? A simple traffic stop with these pigs, a brother might die. I asked why we let it slide and never bust back, but you're only comfortable shooting a gun if your target is black. But anyway, this new Jim Crow breeze, these killer cops. The real terrorists and agitators patrolling our blocks. Man, my hands on the steering wheel while your hands on your Glock. I was just reached for my insurance and the Reggie out the glove box. In high school, they used to be punks. They insecure little chumps. So they get a job at the force so they can dump. 50 shots of this brown and the black. A coward only shoots you in the back. Killing an armed citizens. What's up with that? Oh, booty ass. I thought it was a taser ass pig. Protective custody, the only way that measure Leah live. 10,000 young people killed by the police From Kenneth Harding and HP To Kamani Grand in the East It's gotta cease Cops keep firing in my environment Cops keep firing in my environment Cops keep firing in my environment Cops keep firing Rest in peace, Sasha Grant Rest in peace, Sean Bell Rest in peace, Rakia Boy Come on, come on Cops keep firing in my environment This so-called war on drugs and mass incarceration Prison labor Wait, I got it right here, hold on That's the hook, y'all Hold on real quick This so-called war on drugs and mass incarceration Prison labor, death penalty and LWOP Got them racially profiling Cause they think we are wildin' What you pull me over for, son? Your descriptions, I fit none I ain't the one like Ice Cube, so don't come at me, rude. You get respect and get respect, young pig. I'm from the old school. But I ain't no fool. I keep my hands where you can see him. He said, I'll kill you if you move. I took his word. I believed him. They got the upper hand now, but hopefully not for long. That's intentions and purpose behind me making this song. We got to fight for something or die for nothing at all. We got to stand for something or if my people will call. Let's police ourselves, make our own justice system. Raise a nation of lawyers and protect all the veil mixes. When you get out of prison, come home and protect the hood. By any means necessary, you protect our hood. Make sure it's good. Come on, y'all. Cops keep firing in my environment. 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 Come on. Last verse, y'all. How y'all feeling? Yeah. What is suspicious behavior or appearance? Is that your racist excuse for your stop and frisk pump? We ain't trying to hear it. Militarized occupation along with racist legislation. Gives impunity for killers with a badge, no hesitation. Black communities must organize for our own self-defenses. No more passage resistance if you want to preserve our existence. I'm taking our human rights violations to the United Nations. I'm bringing up criminal charges for this police lawlessness. My motto prays the gods, but pass me the ammunition. I'm willing to die for my people. It's time you make that decision. If you're scared of a hearse, then take your ass to church. Because if you stand up to these pigs, you can die when you stand in the dirt. Every 36 hours, a brother's killed by the pigs. This is a nationwide call to protect that kid. Whether it's an eye for an eye or a tooth for a tooth, let's make the police think twice before they kill me or you. Stand up for the hood, fool. Everybody, Black Lives Matter. My name is Delonte. Thank you very much. Black
that tries hard to crush those with voices loud who happen to protest. And because we all decide to stand instead of cower or flight, they do not go gentle into the light. And to us all, my people, here on this glorious height, bless me now with your fierce tears and raised fists, I pray. We must not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Power, power to the people. become martyrs for this movement. Please bow your heads for those that have passed at the hands of law enforcement and who have now become martyrs for this movement. Just hold on. Hold on to each other. Because at the end of the day, that's all we have. someone that you may not have never ever met. Someone who is standing next to you in solidarity for a movement that somehow started at the hands of blood. And now we're standing together in strength. Whoever would have saw the day or thought the day would come that we stand and scream the words black lives matter. Hmm. And that brown lives matter. Brown lives it may have taken too long, but we're here. And we must continue this fight. And I ask that you continue to join us. And bless you all. Felicia, can we get closing remarks? Thank you. Thank you.
My kids now exist daily. And my kids were from so much rape. And they still kill them. They shot them once. Is that brutal? Then they still save them in general. And only because he got the license to drive and make money and help his brothers. And they knew that they probably would get a lawyer. They kill him. Please hear me. You're gonna they don't give you a microphone. The whole system's <laughs> fucking wrong!
to support these young people. We ain't going to take over. SEIU is not going to take over. But we will support them. Whatever they need, whatever they need, we will help them. Lawyers, research, supplies, speakers, what do they need? Because these young people are the ones who are getting killed. These are the people who know what's going on in our neighborhood. It's time for the elders to give respect and support to the young people of America. In a moment, we get angry, but a movement takes time. And this is a movement. And I hope that all of you are here for the long haul. Because justice, because justice is not fast and justice is not free. But you have to decide if you're going to be a bystander and stand by, or are you going to be an upstander and stand up for your rights? Power to the people! I kind of lost my voice today, <clears throat> but I just wanted to say that I can't breathe, you know. I can't breathe because despite the fact that slavery ended 149 years ago, it was abolished 149 years ago. Despite the fact that 77 years of Jim Crow and legal segregation was so-called abolished from this democracy, and despite the fact that civil rights movement went on 50 years ago where we had to stand up for our rights, I'm still viewed as a problem before I'm viewed as a person. And I'm tired of it. I'm tired of America. I'm tired of them thinking that they can send $1.3 trillion to go make some new aircraft and we got African kids out here dying on these streets. We can't even, we can't even save these African kids' brains and these Latino kids' brains. But we can spend $1.3 trillion on a new aircraft. We can spend $1.1 trillion on, uh, the, to prevent the government from shutting down. These, 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 these congressmen ain't doing their job. They're not representing us, and I'm tired of it. I'm tired of seeing these little, these little kids murdered out here, and we're spending trillions on dollars, trillions of dollars on war. Yeah. We got things we got to handle right here yeah. in our own country before we start going into other countries. Yeah. And I also wanted to say, the brother mentioned that Mike Brown Sr. will be here on the 15th at Mission High School at 4 p.m. He will also be here on the 14th, which is tomorrow, at 4 o'clock p.m. at Third Baptist Church, 1399 McAllister, 4 p.m. So please, make it there. We got to keep this movement going. We got to show support to everybody because I'm tired of this. I'm tired of seeing these little, our kids out here dying. I'm tired of it. So we got to keep on moving, keep this momentum going. That's all I got to say. All right. Thank you, brother. All right, so thanks, Austin. So we're coming close to an end, and I just want to say thank you. There has been much peace and much love filled in our hearts and in our bodies, and we've been here, and there has been no civil disobedience in this vicinity. I know we've heard two arrests so far, but overall, with us here, living bodies listening and breathing and holding hands together, this is good, this is, this is a move, this is a step forward. And so thank you, this is huge, we've done this. Thank you, Dia. I want to see everyone's right fist in the air. Everyone's right fist, sorry, everyone's left fist in the air. Yeah, they're left. <laughs> I 
<laughs> we have thousands and thousands of people here. We have fists in the air providing power to the people. And all I ask is that we end this march today, continue this movement tomorrow in peace. In peace. And our brother, our brother here, Ben, said it well, amor. Amor means love. And if we can chant leaving this with love, it's the best way we can do it. Love! 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 Thank you, everyone!